I'm the beauty professor and you can find my beauty blog at beautyprofessor.net. I hope your summer has been fantastic. I know mine has been such a blessing. Great to have some time off from my regular teaching schedule, but I've been busier than ever with beauty blog stuff and while I'm thankful for that, it has definitely taken my time away from filming videos which are really time intensive. So. I am excited today to share a hybrid get ready with me plus kind of summer skincare and beauty favorites and it's taking the place of my July and probably August favorites so get some food and a drink and enjoy hopefully because this is going to be a chatty rather lengthy video because I'm covering an expanse of products that I have been grabbing for frequently over the last few months. Quick word on my outfit and accessories. I'm wearing a silk blouse from Equipment. I probably have 20 of these that I've bought over the years. They're great for work. They're great for casual. This one's a light gray. I love it. I'm also wearing some Topshop cutoffs. Also, great. this is the Ashley Fit, which means they're not as high-waisted and not as short as some of the ones from Topshop. And then for necklaces, I have an antique necklace from my husband on a chain from Barney's that has a T for my husband's name. I also am wearing a new choker that I got from a jeweler who I will link to below. And I'm combining that with one of my chokers from Neutrals Inc., which is an amazing line for delicate, beautiful, handmade jewelry. So I'll walk you through a sampling of what I do in terms of skincare in the morning and I'll show you some variations on that depending on the weather and my skin. So when I wake up in the morning I have bare skin as you can see here and I use the Mila Morsi cleansing foam to wash my face with a warm water and a damp washcloth. It does a great job of removing any dirt and it's really great for sensitive skin. The Mila Morsi pH balancing toner and gosh I don't know what I would do without this. I started using this back in June and it's just become a daily staple for me, morning and night. It balances without tightening, it just makes my skin feel really soft and ready for the skincare to come. Then depending on the weather and the state of my skin is one of three things. One would be the Mila Morsi Dual Action Serum. I am on my second bottle of this so I absolutely love it. It's a great all-around anti-aging serum that provides moisture and also a little bit of glow to the skin. If my skin is just behaving normally, I'll probably grab for this. If it is extra sensitive, then I will use the Lift Lab Lift and Fix, which has incredible calming properties that just work to combat redness. It's an anti-inflammatory ingredients list, so the skin, if it's suffering in any way, if it got windburned or sunburned or it's just really sensitive that day, maybe due to allergies, this is a great way to go. I actually like to keep mine in the fridge so that it enhances the cooling effect of this amazing product. If my skin is just really dry, maybe because of the weather, no humidity, then I embrace the Sisley Global Anti-Aging Cream. I've discussed this before in previous videos and you can see I've made quite a dent since last time it was in a video. I love this. It's very uh, pricey, but definitely well worth it, and every review I've seen online has been positive, and my experience has been positive as well. Just an amazing, all-over nourishing anti-aging cream. Following that basic skincare, I also add a touch of the La Prairie Skin Caviar Lux Eye Lift Cream. This has been a long-standing staple for me, eye cream-wise. You can see I've made quite a dent in the jar, but a little does go a long way, so even though it's an investment product, the investment definitely pays off. Here's how I like to apply. I put just a tiny bit on my ring finger, I distribute it between the two of them, and then I just tap it on into the orbital area here without pulling. So you get some immediate hydration, some lifting, and some firming. It is a favorite product amongst skincare aficionados for a reason. It really does an amazing job of taking care of your eye region. Should time permit, I like to add a bit of the Orlan Magnificent Lip Balm to my lips while I get the rest of my face ready following skincare. And I just add a little goes a long way. So a little bit to hydrate and prep my lips for lip products to come. I like that it's not sticky, that it's really nourishing that it creates kind of a blurring, smoothing effect on the lips and it stays in place for hours. And then I follow with my favorite, the Le Metier de Beauté Pauvierge in shade number two, which I have used habitually for the past three years. It is an all around light tint, moisturizer, SPF, 
and Illuminator. Beautiful formula. I just put a pea-sized amount on my fingers and rub it into my skin to prep my skin for the makeup to come. So we'll just tap it on here. On to foundation. This summer has been an amazing time for foundation releases. I have been blessed to be able to try so many different types of formulas, everything from cushion compacts to high coverage liquid foundations to creamy stick foundation. I've decided to do my foundation demonstration with the Marc Jacobs Remarkable Foundation in Beige Golden. I have a review of this foundation and I will of course link to it, but because it's a newer foundation and I think it's got a very unique texture, I thought I would demonstrate it live action. So first things first, in this frosted glass bottle, you wanna shake it really well. You wanna make sure that the pigments are evenly distributed and suspended in the formula. It's got a dropper and this glass tip that you use to dot the foundation on your face. I'm going to use this dropper and I'm going to place it strategically in four areas of my face here, like this. Now you might be tempted to apply more, at least I was the first time because it feels so thin and light, but the coverage is serious. So use restraint and then you can always follow up with a bit more. Moving on, I'm going to use a dampened beauty blender and this is the purple version. I picked it up at a beauty collection a few months ago. I've already pre-dampened it and I find that the beauty blender does the most fantastic job of blending the foundation. So. I'm just blending it into my skin, focusing on those four sections and then blending outward, like okay. so. Now Beige Golden is a great shade for NC27 to 30 skin. I am definitely at my tannest despite wearing sunscreen. Of course, my skin just tends to soak up the sun if I'm outside. So I would bump up to beige once where my skin gets lighter and I have beige as well. I've swatched it on the blog so you can take a peek at it. Now, I could just stop right here. I might add a touch more just to really refine the canvas, but you can see how powerful just the most minuscule amount of this formula is. It leaves a beautiful satin, matte, kind of natural skin finish that wears really well as the day goes on. So this is the end result after just a little bit more along the center of my face. The concerns that I have when I'm putting foundation on are to cover unevenness, sometimes an errant blemish, and also just to kind of refine the texture of my skin, blur pores and fine lines. I also have some freckles that run across here and across my forehead area, so if I want to really even things out, it needs to be stalwart enough to veil those freckles, but I also want my skin to look like skin, not like foundation, and I find that this Marc Jacobs formula does a really great job of that very impressed by it thus far. Now while we're in foundation mode, I want to mention the others that I've been grabbing for this summer. The first is the Makeup Forever Ultra HD Stick Foundation. I've been wearing it in shade 123 slash Y365, which is called Desert. And I have an extensive review of this on my blog along with swatches of all 15 shades. It is my favorite stick foundation to date. It doesn't look like anything on the skin, and yet it provides great coverage, lasting power, and a beautiful skin-like finish, and it's very portable. You can also use darker or lighter shades for contouring if you wish, and so it just has a lot of versatility. Beautiful new release by Make It Forever. I've also been using the Shantikai Future Skin, not a new foundation on the market, but a new one for me. And I wear it in a mixture of cream and sand right now for my summer skin, but I can probably just go to cream when it gets a little lighter. And I can't figure out what took me so long to try this. I've had questions about it, and I'm so happy I finally gave it a spin. It is light, it provides medium coverage, you cannot see it on the skin, and it has great lasting power. Additionally, I've been grabbing for the Sula Su Perfecting Cushion. It's an SPF 50. When I know I'm going to be outdoors all day long and I need additional sun protection, I use this one. I wear it in shade 25 and it's like your traditional cushion compact, but it's my favorite formula. Just beautiful medium to full coverage. It looks like nothing on the skin. I will link to my review of that as well. I've been loving the Kier Weiss Cream foundation, I'm wearing it in just sheer when in the summertime, and I will be doing a comprehensive review of a few of those light to medium shades very soon on the blog. But if you're looking for a all-natural 
very high performance cream foundation, this is the way to go. For concealer, while I have many favorites from By Terry and Surat Beauty to Laura Mercier, the one that I've been grabbing just without hesitation this summer because it's working really well in the heat is the Clé de Peau concealer. I wear it right now in shade beige, which just seems like it could be a little light, but it's been great for me for combating any darkness under the eyes. Truly just a little bit goes a long way. And then I take my Jenny Patekin domed blender brush and I just blend it in very lightly and carefully. And I've already put that eye cream on, so my skin is prepped and ready to receive that additional color or pigment. Reason my next step in the morning when I'm getting ready is generally brows. And the reason for that is I think, you know, once you shape your face a little bit, you probably use a lot less of everything else you're putting on because before that you could feel a little blank face. Although I have very natural brows, I do very little to them, I still like to fill them in a little bit to add some depth. So I'm using the Jenny Petit and Brow Brow. Nouveau Trevu Arc de Triumph and Fair. It's a brow kind of cream wax and it's been great in the summer. So you can see here, I just kind of run it through the brows to add a little bit of extra definition. So done brow, undone brow. Now that both brows are finished up, I would also mention that I like to use a lot of the By Terry eyebrow mascara as well. I actually always keep this in my makeup bag for touching. I might add just a little coat on top because it's a totally different texture. As It's not a cream, it's more like a mascara formula and it just allows you to groom the brows, make them look polished and shiny, and also kind of tell them what direction to rest on the face. Before I move on to bronzer and blush, I usually use a preloaded lip or concealer brush. This one's from Sephora, and I have the Laura Mercier Secret Camouflage in SC3, which I've used for, gosh, well over 15 years. And you can kind of mix the two shades to make it your best match, so I usually use a lot of the darker shade in the summer. I'm just going to go over any areas that I might want to cover a dark spot, maybe it's post blemish or just a shadow, and I use my finger to just use create warmth to blend it into the skin, and I find this is a much better route to go than adding more foundation for opacity because then it looks really heavy on the skin and your skin's not breathing as much. So this, found it, this concealer works so well for just masking a darkness without budging throughout the day. Now for bronzer, I have amazing bronzers in my current collection and I love experimenting with bronzers, but the one that's always perennially in my makeup bag is the Hourglass Ambient Light Bronzer in Luminous Bronze. And I've been using this nearly daily for months now since its release and I still have a substantial amount of product. So it's well worth the investment. I grabbed from my Chiku Hodo brush from Beautylish. It is the GSN 04, always my makeup bag as well. And I just brush it along my cheekbones like so. Focusing on creating some depth and some warmth on the face, but not too much. If you are looking for a bronzer that just has the most quintessential balance of pigment and kind of luminosity, as you can see these veins of light through here that aren't overtly shimmery, this is the way to go. It's a no-brainer bronzer, so I implore you to think about trying it if you haven't already. I'm going to put some blush on, and this blush doesn't really look like blush, but indeed it is. It's the Visart blush, and I love the Visart line. The eyeshadow palettes are to die for. I've talked about them before, and I'll link to reviews and swatches below. This is the shade Angora, which looks kind of like a dusty, purpley gray. It brings an amazing, very natural look to the apples of the cheeks, so I'm going to use this brush, the same brush, and just add a little bit through here. Now, you can see the difference already. One cheek just has more dimension and a little bit more color. I don't know how this shade does what it does, but it is just exemplary for blush. So onward to another type of glow. I've been working with the Tom Ford Mood Light. This is the Skin Illuminating Powder Duo. It has a very light, pale champagne gold shade up here and a deeper rose gold tan below. Both of these shades are translucent and will work with a variety of skin tones. 
but they are meant to be highlighters, not bronzers. What I do is I use the same brush and I'm going to go ahead and just take the top portion and run it along the top portion of my cheeks where I want the most highlight. Highlight, no highlight. Then I will use the bottom portion and run that over where I've placed the bronzer for some extra luminosity and just a touch of color. Just brings an extra oomph to the face and while I know Tom Ford products are an investment, I am so pleased that I invested in this one. I hear that it is not limited edition, that it might now become a part of the permanent collection. Regardless of its status, I invite you to take a look at it. I don't think you'll regret Two it. Two other highlighting products I've grabbed for a lot this summer are the Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector in Opal and the Make Cosmetics Face Gloss. These two have similar purposes, but different ways of achieving that glowing goal. So the Becca is a very shimmering, as the name would imply, product. I love using it across the brow bones, and I'll just do it here today since I've already put highlighter elsewhere, and you can see how it performs. It just adds the most ethereal glow. Another product, this Make Face Gloss, so beautiful. It actually makes every foundation you wear look really dewy. And you can put the dew where you want it, which makes your skin that much more balanced. I like to use it across here. And because there's no color, it just makes the skin look very healthy, but you're not competing with any other products you've already added. Definitely worth picking up if you can. On to the eyes. So I've been using many different eyeshadows this summer. Of course, the aforementioned Visart palette and Sultry Muse and Paris Nudes are amazing. I also have loved cream shadows, everything from Tom Ford to Chanel. The one that I've been grabbing for lately, and so I thought since it was new for the purposes of demonstration, I would show you the new Burberry Cream Shadows. This is in shade 106, which is pink. They have an amazing texture. They are thinner, less cushiony feeling than the Chanel. Not as creamy, rich as the Tom Ford, but incredibly pigmented and just adhere to the eye so well. Using my artist brush, which is beautiful, I'll be doing a close-up profile on these soon. And this one is specifically designed for the eye. So I'm just putting it into the formula. And I would say Heather Pink is a kind of rosy taupe, the kind of color I go to all the time. And I'm just brushing it onto the lid here. Like now I'll go ahead and use a more precise tiny angled artist brush to bring the shadow along my lower lash line like this. You can really get close to the lash line in a precise way and that's what makes this brush so unique. Two other eye products I grab for a lot are the Gucci Eye Duo in Aristocratic which is kind of like this color but without any shimmer whatsoever. Beautiful duo, I'll link to my review. And also the ever favorite by Terry Ombre Black Star in Bronze Moon, which is just taupey bronze, ultra pigmented perfection. I'm on tube number five or six of this now, and it's always in my makeup bag. Finish this very simple, neutral, rosy eye. I'm going to use the Must Have Color Powder in Moonlight, which is kind of a shimmery champagne with a touch of rose and I'm using my Jenny Petit and Kitten Pop brush to bring that along the brow bone and just kind of underneath as well for some additional luminosity. You can see the difference there. For the lashes, I have three mascaras that I use very frequently but I'm going to show you how I work with the Guerlain Maxi Lash So Volume, which I've had on heavy rotation this summer. Curling, volumizing formula through the lashes, and I'll be back in a minute when I have finished. But you can already see an immense difference between my lashes with just those few strokes. For lips today, I am working with the Charlotte Tilbury Lip Pencil, the Lip Cheat in Hello Talk, which I've used quite a bit of, as you can see. And I'm just tracing the outline of my lips for a very soft nude effect that just defines my lip line. Back to the lips. So since I already have lip liner on, I'm going to go ahead and just put a touch of the Guerlain Kiss Kiss Lip Lift, which is a primer I've been playing with lately. And it doesn't create any color, 
but it does add an immense amount of smoothness on the lips and a little bit of hydration. It's great as kind of a base for the rest of your lip color to cling to. Such a great product from Guerlain. And I'm going to be using the Surat Automatique Lip Crayon, which is a, in this case, a beautiful peachy pink. This shade is Birthday Suit. I also love Scantily Cloud, which is similar, just a hair darker, but still decidedly nude. And these are creamy, matte, and highly pigmented. So I'm just putting this all on my lips, and since I have a good lip liner base, my lip line is under control. I have swatches of every shade of the Automatique lip crayon on my blog, which I will link to. And here is the final lip. Now some other lip products that I've been using frequently this summer are the Laura Mercier Lip Parfait, especially in pink grapefruit, which is a great corally peach. Also the YSL Rouge Per Couture in number 23. More on that soon. I do love the Marc Jacobs Lip Liner in Honey Bun. And the gloss I'm going to finish this lip look off with is the NARS Lip Gloss in Chelsea Girl. I used to have the pot version. This stick or this lip gloss version is so much better. Still pigmented and just the perfect complement to any nude lip under the sun. So more on this soon enough. Absolutely adore this new release. And as I close this video, I want to mention two powders that I use to lightly set my makeup and also touch up with throughout the day. The first is the Kogan Doe Silky Moist Powder. I have swatches of every shade on my blog right this second. I will link to it. And I just might bring some right through the center area here because that's where I tend to get my unwanted oiliness as the day wears on. But I don't want to remove the glow that I've just worked hard to create. And while that concludes entirely the makeup look, the get ready with me part, I not close this video without discussing four products that have really transformed my routine this summer. The Lemieux Skin Perfector. It has revolutionized the way I clean my face. More on how I do this in a separate video, but essentially you put this on a wet face and the incredibly fast ultrasound clears the pores without any irritation. It's amazing. So I will link to my review of that. Also the Talika Liposils has really, has definitely improved the health, length, and darkness of my lashes over the last few weeks. So I'm going to continue using it day and night. More on this soon, but it is an amazing serum. It's been on the market for a long time and it's highly lauded. Also the Orbe Shine Light Reflecting Spray, that's all I have in my hair today plus brushing it of course and it smells divine and really smooths out the hair in a weightless way adding shine and movement without weighing it down and then the trend nail balsam it has changed my nails that were splitting cracking peeling horrible at the beginning of summer from painting them I guess and now I've changed nothing else except using this regularly it's not a paint it's not an oil it's a balsam and it has hydrated my nails to the point where they are all healthy. So a uh, big shout out to Jane Daly of Daily Beauty for putting this on my radar. I am so thankful I found it. And so concludes my get ready with me favorite products of the summer hybrid video. Thank you so much for watching and I've truly appreciated your encouragement and kind words over the last month or month and a half asking me for when maybe videos would be coming back again. Thank you for that. It's definitely what held me into wanting to make sure I got this video done. I would love to hear what products you've been grabbing for this summer. And as always, I invite you to visit me at Beauty Professor. In the meanwhile, have a fantastic rest of your summer and take care.